Hello friends, Mo here. Grab your fun drink. Today I have lemon ginger tea by True Honey Teas. I got it from an Evanston Mart last year. And we will explore Roscoe Village together. From what it is on paper, then through the lens of how I live as a 20-something Vietnamese American person in Chicago, this is your realistic neighborhood guide. Feel free to use the timestamps to navigate our guide's categories, and be sure to stay until the end for our mango rating system. Let's get into it. Yes, Roscoe Village, the place to be and the village within the city. Let's dive into how exactly this super family-friendly kind of stroller capital of Chicago came to be. Roscoe Village is the neighborhood west of Lakeview, which basically all started when land developers wanted to construct Riverview Park, which was to be the world's largest amusement park. Never quite understood, by the way, how these places could all claim that they're the best and biggest in their respective categories, but I digress. Riverview Park operated from 1904 to 1967. For more than 60 years, hundreds of thousands of people flocked to this park, which um, again resided in the heart of Roscoe Village and thus North Center. The park ultimately started declining in the late 1960s because as we know, people were racist. The park named games and rides at the NAACP actually was able to lobby and shut down after a while because people of the public would unofficially rename rides with full-on slurs. White flight is of course what ultimately ended the venture once and for all. Riverview Park was becoming less and less valuable than the land that it was built upon. Once sold, it became what we now know as the Riverview Plaza Shopping Center, which includes Mariano's, Joy Yee, and Wingstop, um, the Chicago Police Division, the Paul College Prep High School, and Richard Clark Park. And actually, if you walk through Richard Clark Park um, to see the river and the eventual kayak rental house and all, you will come across a wooded area that people now use for biking and skating. And in this area, if you look closely enough, you'll actually see the original Riverview Park foundations. Anyway, scaling it back down a bit, we are back to Roscoe Village as a neighborhood. With tourism happening on its outskirts, many businesses, especially bars and pubs, started springing up along um, Roscoe Street, Belmont Avenue, and Western Avenue. And of course, with park workers and new business owners kind of coming into the area all at once, many people started building new houses on top of what were originally greenhouse spaces. This slow development occurred until about 1920 when Roscoe Village officially tore down any remaining greenhouses rapidly. Two flats were being built and first to move in were originally home to second generation German Americans and Swedish immigrants, all who were originally working at the growing factories that were popping up on the eastern side of the neighborhood. With the Great Depression to follow, people stopped working and started wanting to move out. No one wanted to move in or buy within the village anymore with how desolate it was quickly becoming. In the late 1970s, a series of garage fires is what ultimately started the Roscoe Village Neighbors, or RVN. The neighborhood group, RVN, recovered the area's reputation by starting its first ever Roscoe Street Summer Festival in 1986, which is now known as Retro on Roscoe. Now, in 2024, you will see many strollers and dogs being walked about along streets of the village. Adjacent to Lakeview, Roscoe Village is a neighborhood most convenient to the Belmont, Red, Brown, and of course, Rush Line Purple lines that are to the east. But back in the heart of it, sort of to the west, that is where we will explore some food, shopping, and entertainment. First, let's quickly get nightlife out of the way. Because personally, Roscoe Village is more of a weekday dinner or weekend daytime shopping spot. The quaint neighborhood doesn't have a strong nightlife exactly, but it is a short bus ride south via Damon and Western if you want to hit up Wicker Park and Logan Square respectively. If you're hoping to stay within its borders though, be sure to visit Village Tap, usually bustling with neighbors, 
Beat Kitchen, which gets pretty punk, but I did walk past signs talking about the Naked Brothers Band and Leon Thomas III playing their separate times, so it does get a capital V variety. And Hungry Brain, everyone's favorite intimate jazz joint with monthly dance parties hosted by Bricktown Sound. Again, I feel Roscoe Village thrives in its early morning to mid-afternoon times of day, uh, so its coffee shops are no exception. Ordered from west to east, we have first on our list, Levant Coffee on Roscoe Street. The newest coffee offered on the block, this small coffee shop has more interesting menu items such as baklava latte. When I visited very early on a Saturday morning, the line went out the door since the order here line wrapped around one way and the pickup here kind of group they simply existed in a cluster it is a very small space inside but it makes for a more quaint time in non-peak hours with its available waiting bench i love stopping in because they have baked goods from deflowered bakery if you are in search of always gluten-free sometimes dairy-free items uh, without going as far north as andersonville levant coffee has got your back a final note to plan your trip be sure to stay on the go. There is no long-term social seating available here except for one picnic bench outside and recently they added two more seated benches. Next on our coffee list is Sweet Rabbit Bakery. A no-frill shop on Belmont Avenue, Sweet Rabbit is where you want to go for fresh loaves of bread and solid coffee. Unfortunately, they rarely have gluten-free goodies and they do not have public Wi-Fi. However, they do have a few tables and chairs both inside and out for all of your socializing or reading needs. Lastly, before I take you shopping, enter the Bakehouse back on Roscoe Street. Of course, there is a full, full menu for both coffee and tea something for everyone. This is going to be your more substantial spot if wanting breakfast with their breakfast sandwiches and even gluten-free bagel options. Their gluten-full croissant sandwiches are buttery and flaky just how they should be. If you're not as hungry, they have plenty of bakery options such as trasaches, cheesecakes of any sort, and macaroons. It's overall a fully flushed spot for all of your weekend morning needs or a quick pick-me-up. Just note, this is your most social spot among the three um, with tables both inside and out. There are families with babies and young children constantly coming in and out. Um, you'll often see regulars greet one another even. It's really sweet to see, but it's probably not ideal if you wanted to sit and quietly get work done. However, there were plenty, plenty of outlets along the wall to use inside. Here's a noise sample. All right, with your new fun drink in hand from either Levant Coffee, Sweet Rabbit Bakery, or The Bakehouse, we're ready to go shopping. Let's start with bookstores. Closest to the big house is the last chapter bookshop. While I don't personally enjoy romance reading, I can recognize a good niche bookstore when I see one. This quaint shop has clearly marked section headings from by POC, sports, LGBTQ+, and all. There are stickers, bookmarks, clothing items, candles, and more, making this your best north side one-stop shop for all things romance for yourself or giving gifts to others. If you're feeling photogenic, be sure to head toward the back. There are four mirror selfie setups, all with different interactive activities and aesthetics. I often enter with new visitors, and every time I do, I'm greeted by two friendly faces waiting at the front. Walking further west down Roscoe Street, you'll come across Roscoe Books. Quaint, quiet, and cozy, there are also two more benches in the middle um, available for browsing and waiting. This shop is where you'll find cooking, social justice, young adult, graphic novels, and kids' titles for all ages. Every section is sweetly named with substantive staff reviews to kind of indicate favorites and socially relevant picks. There are also one rack and one wall full of Chicago-esque greeting cards for you to pick up in your time here. The best part of Roscoe Books is the fact that they do have a member incentive or reward system that you can opt into. All right. On to retail, thrift, and vintage shops. I feel it would be easiest to describe the shopping here in order from east to west, starting with Shangri-La Vintage. Or east to west. I forget which direction 
I've been starting with since the beginning. You get the deal though. Shangri-La Vintage. This purple exterior store is filled to the brim inside with clothing and accessories for all genders from the 50s through the 80s. With this, if you have a bag or a large load you're carrying, be sure to check it in at the desk or leave it with a friend outside um, so you have an easier time meandering about. Also, this way you wouldn't risk um, snagging clothes and whatnot. If you're also artsy craftsy, um, if you just enjoy antique things, whatever what have you, the owner of the store has a great Playboy collection kind of tucked away at that back right corner um, with everything no newer than the 90s. Everything here is reasonably priced with tagged descriptions and notes of any imperfections so you know exactly what you're getting every time. Next down the street is Covington's Cabinet the woman and PhD owned conscientious cannabis store. And when the owner, Jennifer, is in, usually on the weekends, um, you may have the chance to meet Covington the dog himself. This unique store is warm and it's not at all sterile like other shops. It houses CBD products from topicals, human consumption, and pet consumption. Toward the back wall are their THC infused products. Their team is four people, so you'll always see a familiar friendly face. Such an intimate store, you are well taken care of with any questions and recommendation requests you may have. Fun fact about their chandeliers, um, they used to be legitimate gas lamps. It's so cute in here. Finally, this place does have a reward system which you may opt into, which I do heavily recommend um, because they have unique kind of random percentages off future purchases. Continuing down the street is the Village Discount Outlet. There are multiple locations of these across Chicago. For any of these locations, Roscoe Village included, be sure to carve out time and put on your headphones. These are true definitions of thrift shops and this location is massive with a basement full of items. More details on this another time as I kind of compile a Chicago thrifting video. But again, these clips show you, it's a great time. I would be remiss if I did not mention these last three miscellaneous stops. Roscoe Village has amazing food which you should definitely check out from Thai to Mediterranean and pizza at Bertoli's Pizzeria on Addison. However, you might notice some more energy kind of buzzing about around the region. This is everyone's favorite burger and milkshake in the area specifically before stopping into the Village Tap or another bar to continue the night. The inside is tea tiny tea tiny with a few tables and chairs hugging the windows to look out so the draw is definitely in people taking food and beverages to go or out to the sidewalk setup that they have i've seen a couple of people squeeze strollers through the cramped door area which i am unsure is worth it but you gotta do what you gotta do if folks are in the area with 13 dollars to spare for a quick lunch that is certified good, um, I would recommend it. However, because this is a classic spot for all of my gluten-free and dairy-free substitution needing people, and this is not your place. To either start or wind down from a nice day, you can always check the calendar for move therapy and wellness yoga. Yoga classes here are pretty intimate. I believe they accommodate maybe 9 to 15 people maximum from the times that I went there and tried to count around. I personally prefer this though to larger studios practices. So if you've been looking for a smaller yoga um, class to get you out and about, but not with like microphones and whatever whatnot with 50 plus people, you might want to check this place out. They have monthly discounted packages and all. Just ask the front desk. If you are also on ClassPass, they're available on there. Therapy sessions at MOVE are also available with insurance and sliding scale options. After exiting MOVE, you can walk south down Hamilton Avenue and you'll come across Victory's banners, books, and gifts for all of your incense and kind of last minute gift shopping needs. This small shop run by a married couple has got you covered with everything under the sun in terms of gifts um, as long as you're stopping in when they're open on the weekend. They grow fresh mint outside, by the way, for anyone to take if you do also happen to pass by when closed. That was a lot for such a simple neighborhood. And so I'll start to wrap this up with some facts for you. Street vibe and traffic. We have very quiet tree-lined residential streets. Roscoe Street is busier with neighborhood cars and bikes and Belmont Avenue is especially going to be noisier with more city commuters. 
However, this area is generally quiet, so you can safely walk or bike throughout. Parking. Lots of free street parking. I don't think I've really seen permit parking in the heart of Roscoe. I might have just missed it, but the only paved moments are going to be on Roscoe Street and if you're as far north as Addison. If you're on Belmont, just be mindful of the kind of red city of Chicago signs that tell you if it's no parking from 4 to 6 p.m. for example, or certain inches of snow, that kind of deal. Lots of tiny parks for families, but for folks like me to picnic and enjoy outside of mini league baseball teams, um, try out Hamlin Park. They also have a free public pool there if you want to go online and check out their schedule. If you like this neighborhood, I assume you kind of like a quiet, family-friendly space with lots to do but time to turn in for the night. With this, be sure to check out From the North to South, Lincoln Square, Ravenswood, North Center, Bucktown, and even Bridgeport. You made it! We stay true to our name of Mango Mo by rating my personal experiences on scales of color, based on atmosphere, environment, ambiance, aesthetics, and texture, based on intent, the purpose, and impact of a, of a place or space. For Roscoe Village, I rate it a sweet on this arbitrary photo for scale reference. Based on the atmosphere, this is the perfect neighborhood for a sunny day on your feet with no time constraints. Seriously, if you live on the north side and have yet to visit, you won't regret the kind of deeper breaths of fresh air you may be able to take with how less crowded it is here. Based on the intent, it never seems to do more than what it wishes for. Roscoe Village has grown to be an affluent and strong community-based location. I remember seeing so many flyers for an anti-Raising Cane's drive through petition, construction petition, and um, I never heard anything again about a Cane's after that month of, you know, whoever was putting up those flyers. Also, the annual retro on Roscoe is always a hoot, and Roscoe Village is quite close to Lakeview, so the neighborhood gets to share in other neighborhood kind of city local fests such as Burger Fest and many summer porch concert series. It seems Suki has awakened from her grooming and nap time, so <laughs> why do you look like that? I will give her a treat and stand up to play momentarily. Oh, you're, you're leaving. Thank you all for exploring Roscoe Village with me. Be sure to let me know what your favorites are down in the comments, either from this video or your own that you've encountered. Subscribe and be sure to visit hellomangomo.com for more. Until next time, be well.